Hey everybody, it's your boy, and I see a general dismissive attitude towards cities on the right, and you can understand why, because a lot of people who are right-winged are not necessarily city dwellers like I am. They tend to be from towns, not cities, either small or large, or from rural areas, and obviously that affects their worldview. And coupled with the fact that they look at voting patterns all over the West, and they see that generally cities vote left, rural areas vote right, therefore when it comes to elections and gaining power that way, we must concentrate on the rural vote and ignore the urban vote because that is a lost cause, they will always vote left no matter who, and we will be better off with these rural voters. But that is a losing strategy because eventually the world will become even more urbanised and if we don't start trying to change people's minds, these urban areas that are developing and growing will only become further left and these rural areas will slowly start to recede and will become less of a factor. Of course, it depends largely where you live, but that seems to be the general case in Britain and also in places like America. Although America also has the added bonus of the Electoral College, which helps to mitigate a lot of the advantages that the cities have over the rural areas. But still, reclaiming the cities is very important because it allows you to win elections and gain power far more securely than relying on your old rural small town voting base. Cities are, of course, the centre of where a lot of things happen in Western countries. Cultural activity, economic activity, technological activity. Yeah, sure, small towns, large towns, rural areas have their own cultural activity and economic activity, but it's on a much smaller scale. It's cities where all the stuff happens, and the left recognised that, and that's why they wanted to control them. It's also simply where most people who vote live. Therefore, it's a no-brainer that we should really be trying to push heavily into these areas, but you don't see right-wing parties really doing that. You might see some smaller ones try to get some kind of power base there. Usually, in Europe at least, they're smaller parties that go into, say, mainly white working class areas and managed to get maybe the odd MEP. UKIP, for example, when Britain was in the EU, is a classic example of that. But it's not enough. We need the mainstream parties with the resources that they have to push into these cities more. But what do they do? Just take my city, Manchester, for example. The Conservative Party don't even bother to put in decent candidates. They don't bother to do the activism necessary to beat the Labour foothold. Sure, Labour in this city is nowhere as bad as it is in, say, Liverpool, for example, but they are there for the taking. Nobody really likes them. They vote for them because they're idiots. I think, personally, that Labour in this city could be toppled in the next 10 to 20 years if a concerted effort to change people's minds or to stop them voting for them anyway and just stay at home is done. But the reason why they don't bother putting in effort is simply because they think think it's already a lost battle. And it already is a lost battle because they think they've already lost. It really wasn't that long ago that quite a lot of cities in this country and in America and all over the West had conservative mayors or had areas with conservative MPs or representatives. But that's changing because, well, the left are very good at activism. They have essentially several decades head start over us and have more tools in their gear than we do in, in that regard. But also because they don't give up when it comes to stuff like this. They continue to gain more power, continue to fight. Whereas the right have decided, oh, the cities are a lost cause, whatever. Let's just go and concentrate on the Little Englanders, Middle America, that kind of stuff. Which, fair enough, that's fine. This is a losing strategy because eventually the cities are going to get bigger. The rural areas are going to lose their influence. They are losing their influence and eventually we'll have the situation where the left will win no matter what because the right has too small of a population to win elections. But how do we go about reclaiming the cities? Well, I did a whole speech on this in Nomas and part of it is a propaganda battle. If you go to any major city in this country, it doesn't matter if you're in the north or the south, in Scotland, Northern Ireland or Wales, you will see constant left-wing activity, even if you don't necessarily see it in a protest form or in buildings or anything like that, but you will see it in posters. You will. And why is that? Why do you see all these posters and flyers and evidence of activity? Well, partly because they're advertising something, obviously, but it's not just that. It's there because they're trying to make out that they run that town. They are the ones in control they are the ones that predominate. When really, when you look at it, most of this left-wing propaganda is just straight-up socialist, communist stuff. These people are a minority, sure. A lot of the people in cities who are working class and middle class are so-called social conservatives, where they're socially somewhat conservative but left-wing economically. They're not commies, are they? Full-on proper leftists are a minority all over the West. But they're that 10% minority, that unruly minority that can change things. And that's why I think 
the right wing should be engaging in counter propaganda to start slowly shifting the balance towards ourselves and away from them to make people realize that there is actually an alternative to these people that are constantly ruining their cities. Sure, most people who live in cities are brain dead who will only vote red because either they think they're better off dead or because their grandparents did it and if a pig was wearing a red ribbon they'd vote for that pig but as we have seen over the past 12 years there is that silent majority who are not so keen to show that they vote Tory or vote Republican they'd rather keep that hidden and part of that is because the left are so good at making it taboo to even say that you're a Tory or a Republican in these areas. By fighting this propaganda, which has another added bonus of making right-wingers feel they're alone, or these other people who vote Tory feel that they're alone and can't speak out, if we fight this propaganda with our own, they will become more emboldened. They will want to seek out other people and become more vocal, more active, more open. And that's what we want. Is it using the same tactics as the left? Yes. But so what? This is how you win elections. This is how you win the culture. Because culture is downstream from politics, and at the moment, the left still have that stranglehold on the culture and cities are the centre of culture and in order to win that culture we must win the cities. It is that simple. Another thing obviously is those of you who say for example live in Britain, I don't know what it's like in other countries, I know in America they have primaries, you need to either primary the rhinos for example or if you're in Britain, elect candidates who will actually give a crap about your city and want to actually do something about it and make sure they're back. Try and get some people in the local party to actually help them, try and fundraise them to get a really good campaign going. You might not win the first time round, you might not even win the second or third, but the idea is that you get better and better as you go on, you learn the stakes, you network with other people and eventually you will defeat the leftist mayor that you've had for years and you'll install your own person. That is literally the only thing you can do in that regard. You have to go door to door. You have to encourage people to vote for you, or at the very least, not vote for that person, which is also a fine tactic to use. Demoralizing people is something that we're gonna have to learn to do. But how do you get people to vote for you even when they vote against their own self-interest? Well, you have to make it so blatantly obvious that this is against their self-interest that they vote for you or just don't bother voting for that other person. Cities all over the West, to varying degrees, are suffering crime waves, they're suffering homeless problems. Surely a wise Tory candidate would say we're going to clean up the city, we'll sort out the homeless problem because the current mayor, the Labour Party, has promised to do this but failed to do so. We will have a zero tolerance approach to crime and I think people would respond to that. They respond to simple blunt things like that. There's just some examples that I can think of that we can use to win these people's opinions over, especially in cities like New York, for example, or LA, where the crime is through the roof at the moment. And it has worked in the past before. Rudy Giuliani got into the mayoral office for a reason. But if we don't take advantage of these problems, if we don't come up with a good way of making ourselves marketable to these people, if we don't make a good job of just actually getting into power and wrestling control from the left, then things will only get from bad to worse. But anyway, I think I'll leave it there because otherwise I will just repeat myself constantly. Uh, until next time, it's been your boy and I'll see you all later.